here is the synagogue above us. You can see a menorah and the ball. And let's take a look at the other side. Okay, and here's the other uh, view of the synagogue. And the other view of the uh, new synagogue. And here is the menorah and the rah. Mm. I thought it necessary to go into some more um, information on the synagogue and the 70 elders and the Sanhedrin council so that we have some understanding of what this governmental council, this, this council is about. In order for us to understand it, we have to really look at all the history and everything that goes into what it is that we're looking at, at this Western Wall hidden underground synagogue. I know there's a lot of questions about this, a lot of things that, that many of you are kind of confronted with new concepts, okay? Now, you know, what is this? Is this the temple? What is going on? We are obviously have, you know, high-ranking U.S. officials now visiting so we're really into something quite serious here. Now, what we're going to do is go over the details of what Ezekiel tells us, um, information he tells us about this, okay? And we're going to get right into Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. Um, Ezekiel is beginning to see something hidden by the wall. First thing he sees is something called a seat or habitation of an idol of jealousy. Okay, now there's things in this synagogue which are things that are types and shadows of the temple. All right, and this synagogue is necessary for there to be a place, a meeting place, a building, a facility for the Sanhedrin to meet. Once the Sanhedrin meets, then they can judge upon the matters okay so um ezekiel sees in verse five son of man lift up your eyes now the way towards the north so i lifted up my eyes towards the north and behold northward at the gate of the altar was an image or idol of je jealousy at the entry okay so this is a description of the abomination that makes desolate that the lord jesus christ talked about verse six and he said there uh, furthermore unto me son of man see what great abominations that the house of israel commits here that i should go far off from my sanctuary so there there's things that are like his sanctuary okay and he brought me by a door of the court and i looked behold a hole in the wall so what we have is we have this room by a wall it's right next to the western wall which you can see right in the background we'll go through the pictures and the symbolism here we're just going to read ezekiel chapter 8 and go through these details son of man dig now in the wall so we have to dig you know lots of people 
haven't seen this. So we have to dig. We have to dig in the scriptures. We have to dig in order to find out what this is. What does this mean? Verse 9, go in, behold the wicked abominations that they do there. And the circumstances around us finding this hidden synagogue was quite interesting. Previously in the day, we saw the altar dedication that was on Hanukkah outside the wall. And then we then saw this place. So verse 10, so I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel were portrayed upon the wall. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. Now, let's just take a pause on reading. We're going to come back to Ezekiel. Now, what is this, these 70 elders, these ancients? What, what is this? Okay, this is an uh, important um, thing for us to understand here because this is not new, okay? What's happening is this is God's counsel, his governmental order of uh, this number 70. Now, this number 70 predates the Jews. You go back and you can see this as it relates to the nations. So there in Genesis, it describes 70 nations, okay? Then in Deuteronomy 32, it says, God divided the sons of Adam, the sons of Adam, according to um, those nations, uh, according to the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel, of course, are the 12 sons, okay, number 12, and there is always 70. So Jacob goes into Egypt with 70, okay? Then the governmental order is instituted with Moses. Moses is judging all the people, and it's too much work for him, so they, he then gives, uh, he lay hands on, the, on 70 elders. They then judge with Moses, okay? Then uh, when we get to David, David has the temple okay the physical temple is instituted and with it is also the 70 elders okay actually let's let's back up one more step here before we get into david again and you can see we have scales here we're going to talk about the shekel of the sanctuary in another message you can see we have a coin here okay and in the shekel of the sanctuary in numbers chapter 7 there are bowls and there are 70 shekels, okay, that's the weight a shekel is to weigh, okay? So it's 70 shekels that go into the bowl. So again, this bowl holds the offerings, okay? So again, this number 70 is very important for us. Okay, so then we have 70 shekels uh, per bowl of the 12 tribes. So again, we have 12 bowls, each bowl is 70 shekels in Numbers chapter 7. Then again, David, he has 70. Um, I'll put all the verses here, but in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, the order of bringing up the Ark of the Covenant, there are 70. Now, how, the, David also institutes something called the House of David. The, there is a priesthood that is uh, ordered and organized that is uh, for the temple. And when in the temple, there are 24 judges. There are 24 singers and musicians, and there are 24 porters. So many times in the scriptures, you'll see the number 70 and 72 are synonymous. So if you add um, 24 plus 24 plus 24, it's 72. And again, we have this governmental order of 70. Okay. Now, David Institute an, an order of 24. Remember, each class was 24. Well, these are the 24 elders that we see in Revelation. That's a priesthood. He has made us kings and priests unto God. Well, how are we kings and priests unto God? We're kings and priests unto God according to the house of David, and that's in 1 Chronicles 24. So, 70. You see that? It's a governmental council. Okay, so God institutes this council uh, up until David, and he's place that order as the 70 souls that go into Egypt, as the 70 elders with Moses, as the 70 in the house of David. All right, then once we get into Ezekiel chapter 8, things are going wrong. 
Okay, God has placed this order. God has said, build the temple, all right? But the uh, children of Israel doing wicked, abominable things, and they're being judged, okay? So when they're judged, they're always... Uh, the, the council of 70, the Sanhedrin, is broken. It's dispersed, okay? They're dispersed. The temple is destroyed. They're dispersed. And then they're brought back again, okay? And they're dispersed. And then they're brought back again. And so this is, this is just the pattern, okay? So now Ezekiel is then bringing us to a place of judgment on these 70 elders, okay? So we could see them. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. That's in Ezekiel 8, verse 11. Now, it also talks about uh, verse 16. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, a door at the temple between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple and their faces towards the east. And they worship the sun towards the east. Okay, so now we have, what do we have? About 25. Well, we saw in the house of David how there were judges. There were 24 judges, right? So sometimes their numbers aren't exactly right, but it should be 24, okay? Because you see that in 1 Chronicles 24, and you see that in Revelation chapter 4, where there are 24 elders, which are given crowns, which are seated on thrones, okay? So the precise number is 24. But we have this, the, these... Uh, numbers here. And these numbers are exactly what we can see in the actual chairs in the synagogue. Okay? So we have this um, council. Now we have this council that God has set in place being corrupted and being judged. So it's being judged here, all right? And it's also judged at the time of Yeshua. Yehoshua is judged. He is sentenced to death by who? The Sanhedrin, the council of Pharisees, okay? So that Sanhedrin is also based on these numbers, okay? 70, okay? Uh, and then sometimes they say 23, sometimes they say 24, here it says 25, but it's the same thing. It's called a Beit Din, or a house to judge. All right, now let's look at what it says here about these, about 25. They have their backs towards the temple of the Lord. Now, if we look at this synagogue, what it's doing, it's, it's facing the western wall. So it's facing what? East. Okay? And that wall, the western wall, is not the temple. That's a Roman fortress. So they got their back against the wall. I mean, their back is, they're, they're facing the western wall, but their back is against the true location of the temple. So that's behind them. Okay? So this whole synagogue is, is oriented towards the Roman fortress, okay? And their backs towards the temple of the Lord. So the, the temple of the Lord is going to be behind them. And their faces towards the east. So they're facing east, and they worship the sun. Now, if we look at this synagogue, we'll see this round ball. Well, that's what the, this is. They, they can say what they want, but it's the sun. They're worshiping the sun. They're facing the sun. They're facing this ball. They're facing east. And their back is to... The temple and he said he said verse 17 son of man have you seen what they did it's a light thing in the house of judah to commit these abominations which they do okay now another thing here i want to mention um okay then he said to me son of man have you seen what the ancients of the house of israel do in the dark now these are all things that are underground every man in the chambers of his imagery. Now, we've shown you all the chambers that will be part of the third temple. This synagogue is part of the third temple because you must have the synagogue, the Sanhedrin council first. You have to have the judges in a row first. Now, we'll show you some of the other things we've shown you on their plans and everything that they said, oh, we're going to make this place for the Sanhedrin. No, it's already built. It's this synagogue, okay? But it's this synagogue being described here, okay? Um, and what they do, you see the chambers of their imagery. So guys, what happens is the reason there's a physical synagogue, a physical temple, okay, being built is because of what's on the hearts of the people. The chambers of their hearts, their chambers of their hearts 
um, are expressed through a physical temple. All right, and you can see that for time's sake, we're not going to go there. That's in Ezekiel chapter 14. And then he said to me, turn yet again, and I will show you greater abominations that they do. And he brought me towards the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Guys, if you go to the Western Wall, there's tours. Everything I showed you is public tours, okay, in the previous videos. But uh, all along that, there's a certain section of it that only women could go to and pray. Now, tours go through and walk by. But that's what they're doing. They're weeping for Tammuz. They're weeping for this other god, okay? And it's, this, all this stuff is very unfortunate. You guys, we want to pray for these people. We want to have, you know, love and compassion. But I'm just saying, this is the scriptures being fulfilled. All this is happening, okay, perfectly. So we've got the weeping of Tammuz. You've got this sun, okay, them facing east. They're back towards the temple. Everything it says here in Ezekiel chapter 8 is exactly what we see in this synagogue dig in the wall look underground okay now as we've shown you before let's mention this uh as well that this is for the beast okay the the worships and the things that are going on is the beast in amos chapter 5 we can see as a man did flee from a lion a bear met him and he went out of a house he leaned on the wall and a serpent bit him so these are the characteristics of the beast a lion, a bear, okay, a leopard, which we can see in Daniel 7, and a serpent, or dragon, or a terrible beast, okay? You can see that's clearly the beast there, Amos 5, verse 19, all right? And then it talks about feast days and offerings and all this stuff. But you have bore the tabernacle of Molech, uh, the chun of your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourself. So it's clearly talking about a tabernacle being made to this God. Okay, that's what this is, okay? And we're, we're seeing this live, okay? Now, I wanna go, go to my notes to uh, make sure I cover everything here. Um, but, okay, now, let's, okay, so we talked about the Sanhedrin Council coming up in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ being judged, right? There were 70 elders, called a Sanhedrin. Okay, Sanhedrin is a Greek word for council. All right. Now, the group that did that is in John 11, 40, uh, verse 47. It says the, the Pharisees Sanhedrin. Now, that group of Pharisees in the Sanhedrin um, is the same belief system in rabbinic Judaism today. It's the same. Okay. But what happened is when they were destroyed in 70 AD, there's no temple. So then what they had to do is they had to... Uh, reestablish worship through synagogues okay and so in every synagogue there were essentially two things um, you would have something they called a bima or in greek bima now a grima a bima is a seat it's a chair in greek a judgment seat okay uh, and the way they uh, do it in the synagogue it's like a podium where they read the torah scroll so every synagogue has one a bima now, that ball thing with the pomegranate, okay, which we'll show you. We'll, we'll show you all the details of this. Um, but we're going through the scriptures first, is, uh, is what they call a bima. And they say inside it is the Torah scrolls, okay? Now, the other thing every synagogue has is an ark, okay? It's not like a box of the Ark of the Covenant, but it's a place where they store the scrolls, okay? So that thing is both a bima or bima and an ark. And so ins inside it, they house these scrolls, okay? So this is what's happened. So what's happened is the, uh, Jerusalem is judged, it's destroyed, uh, Judaism is cast out of uh, Jerusalem, and as the Jews are dispersed, they reestablish synagogues of worship with these uh, various characteristics, okay? Now, at the same time that when the Lord Jesus comes, he reestablishes this governmental order of 12 and 70 through his disciples. We know that there are 12 apostles, okay? So he establishes this government order of these 12 apostles. Upon this rock will he build his ecclesia, okay? And there are also 70 disciples, which you can see in Luke chapter 10. Okay, so you can see him instituting this governmental order, 
okay? So, uh, again, this is not something new. It's always been there um, as a, a governmental order, but now in the time of Christ, he then uh, places these uh, mighty apostles, okay, who thus lead the church, the ecclesia, and these 70. These 70 were also in the upper room. Okay, so again, when Christ comes back the second time, okay, he says to seven churches certain things, okay? And he says, he warns us to the church at Smyrna, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. The synagogue we're showing you is the very synagogue Jesus Christ is talking about here in Revelation 2, verse 9. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Suffer, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Okay? So this is the clash, the war, the beast about this uh, council being set. To the church of Philadelphia, behold... I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet, and you shall know that I have loved you. Okay? So it's Jesus Christ that said this. He said there would be a synagogue. Okay? Now, how do we know this is the one? Well, we can see it very, very clearly described in Ezekiel chapter 8. Okay, let's re read here Exodus chapter 24 and verse 9. It says, Then went Moses and Aaron and Nahab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, paved work of sapphire stone. Okay, so one of the things that we can see in this synagogue is the sapphire stone represented by these like lights underneath the the uh, the floor okay and again we've shown you before but what we're looking at here is a section of chairs of 70 seats there's 34 on one side 34 on the other side and a total of 70 all right, we have a podium, and the, the podium, typically in a synagogue, is called a bima, but they're also calling this a bima. And this is the statue, um, as we can see here, that Ezekiel is talking about. He said, son of man, dig in the wall, go in the hole, go in... And this right here is the Western Wall. Okay. Then we have a their backs towards the temple facing the east sun. So that's why this is a ball. Because it is worshiping the sun. We have the pavement stones, the sapphire stones, which we could see in Exodus. And if you study Ezekiel chapter 1, you'll see that there was a crystallite as well. And that's what we have here. So we have the seats of 70. We have the sapphire stones. We have the idol, which is like a sun. And this lights up. The top of it turns red. Um, in these photos, it's not showing that, but um, we've seen that on site. We've, uh, these are some of the things we've shown you before. Another view from below of this Sun idol. Okay, some other things that we have shown you in the underground synagogues. We have other videos that cover that, but again, here is a view of the the sapphire uh, stone, pavement stone represented. You can see you walk below it, and over here to this side is the western wall. Now what I'd like to do is show you the um, video which shows you the plans from the Temple Institute whose organization is planning for the Third Temple. 
this is a photograph of that because what they do is they have the 70 elders always sitting in a circular fashion. And they show their plans to build a Sanhedrin synagogue building and facility. But what we're learning is it's already built. So let's watch that. Okay, there's also been some questions about the Hanukkah. Why does it have nine lamps? Okay, uh, those of you who are not familiar with rabbinic Judaism, the feast and festival of Hanukkah has a Jewish tradition that the lamps on the menorah lasted a certain number of days, and they began to, and it was like a miracle. So because of this miracle, they added a couple lamps to the seven-branch menorah. Um, again, these, these are just not, we have no scriptural reference for this type of thing. It's a, clearly a seven-branch menorah, which are the seven spirits of God, which are the eyes of the Lamb in Revelation chapter 5. So that's what that is, and you can do some more research on it, but there's been some questions, so I thought I'd cover it. Okay, so what have we learned? At Christ's first coming, he was judged at the synagogue and the temple, okay? In the last days, Christ is judged by the synagogue and the temple. The temple that um, comes about in the last days, guys, has a lot more than a single building, okay? There's a lot of things that go into the temple service and rooms and facilities and kitchens, and that's what we're showing you, everything that's already prepared underground by the Western Wall. Okay, so Jesus Christ said, you will not receive me, but you will receive another. Okay, and that what you're seeing is all the preparations going into receiving that other, which we know to be the son of perdition. Okay, so now we have U.S. government officials going into this synagogue. You know, we're reporting on this. We're, we're we're raising awareness to the importance of what this is, okay? Um, not a lot of people are talking about this, so we're trying to get this message out. So please share this. Please get this word. Look, this is going on, okay? Um, most people are looking for a building to sit on top of the Temple Mount, which may or may not be. There's going to be something, okay? But there's something already. That's what we're trying to draw your attention to, okay? So... Um, a lot of work has gone into these messages. We have messages on the 
temple shekel. We have messages on the synagogue. We have messages on all the preparations and things happening for the third temple. So please watch the playlist on the third temple. We talk, uh, you know, at great length about the synagogue. We also talk about the shekel and we talk about everything that's necessary into uh, going about this. OK, one other thing before we wrap it up, when we do have this uh, latest thing, which, of course, is very shocking, seeing the uh, prime minister, seeing the secretary of state signing, signing the symbolism of signing. It's as if they're saying, look, the peace deal we're signing. All right. So guys, we're watching these things. And as we always say, watch and pray. They be counted worthy to escape all these things. In Isos Christos name. Amen.